no time putting his fingerprints on the Sixers roster. The new Philly GM traded Al Horford and his big contract along with a 2025 first round pick and a second round pick, 34th overall to the Thunder for Danny Green and Terrace Ferguson, according to Adrian Wojnarowski. And there are a lot of things to, to break down here when you look at this trade because last offseason, the Sixers made the big storylines, the headlines by bringing in Horford. Let's bring in Woj right now. Why did the Sixers decide to make this move tonight? Uh, Kevin brings them back uh, some athleticism, some scoring. Certainly Danny Green, uh, shooting guard who came in to the Thunder from the Lakers. Terrence Ferguson, a young wing. And they get off the remaining uh, three years of Al Horford's significant free agent contract uh and for you know so for this for the sixers this is a chance now you know to kind of keep reshaping the pieces around ben simmons and joel Embiid, and for the thunder that makes 17 future first round picks uh they are in position and tonight three picks in the first uh and among the top 34. Yeah, sam press is going to just toss to himself as the draft continues in the next couple <laughs> of years yeah. on draft night here so what's next here for daryl morey and, and philly when they clear up some of this room they still save some money a ton of money next year and the following year what does this now mean for the roster moves especially with all the rumors of james harden well listen they're in a position now where they have committed uh, certainly in the short term of building around mb building around simmons and Doc Rivers starting to shape a roster that he wants to play with, with a style he wants to play. And, and listen, the Sixers, uh, it is unclear whether they're going to be big game hunting in this offseason. It feels right now like they're going to continue to keep trying to find complementary pieces around their two franchise players. That, that big game hunting, that was a very famous line last offseason in Philadelphia. We'll see how this plays out. By the way, the busiest thing throughout the entire draft night here at ESPN Woj's phone. He will let us know and keep us up to date on pe pending moves and trades. Sage, to you. Yeah, have that battery charger ready, please, Woj. Here, here are the details of the trade that Woj just reported. The Sixers, again, adding shooting and Danny Green, while the Thunder continue to add to their treasure chest, do they ever. In addition to Al Horford, the Thunder get another first-round pick. That gives them 17 first-round picks to the 20. 26th draft and that way the rich are certainly getting richer Stephen a smith joins us now live here on sports center again this broke within the last 30 minutes Stephen a your reaction to the horford deal is what well the first thing that came to my mind is that first of all congratulations to the philadelphia 76ers because al horford was not the player that he used to be and as a result being owed 81 million dollars over the next three seasons guaranteed you certainly wanted to get out from under that more importantly so more importantly than that, though, is the fact that it puts you in a position to really, really go after James Harden if you so choose. Now, we all have heard that he wants to be in Brooklyn. That is his preferred destination. But remember, he played under Daryl Morey for years. They've got a damn good relationship. I've seen it personally. We know what Daryl Morey stands for. He's always in a win-now mode. Clearly, he's not trying to concede the Eastern Conference to Milwaukee, Miami, Boston, Brooklyn or anybody else and if you're talking about putting uh, James Harden with the 25 year old Joel and Bede in the post you can do some things now obviously it's going to take a lot to get your hands on James Harden Ben Simmons would be a way to start because obviously he's a stud he can ball he can't shoot worth a damn but outside of that he can do literally everything else on the basketball court for you so if you're the Houston Rockets and you're thinking about having a future star and you don't necessarily want to capitulate to the demands of James Harden in Brooklyn in a big three scenario with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. You could say the Philadelphia 76ers are giving us more assets than Brooklyn. But also mm -hmm. keep in mind the X factor. Tillman Fertitta is not exactly is not exactly anxious to do Daryl Morey any favors. It's not a truculent sure. relationship or anything like that. I'm just saying the man used to work for him, got up and left. And a week later, he's the president of basketball operations for the Philadelphia 76ers. So if you're Tillman Fertitta, how anxious are you to help Daryl Morey achieve whatever level of success he aspires for? All of that are interesting components to this particular story. 
In the meantime, Sam Presti is staying very busy out in Oklahoma City. Chris Paul now on to Phoenix, but he's brought Horford in. And again, all these picks, he's compiling three picks in the top 34 tonight. That number 34 as well as 25 and 28. So we'll talk more about the Thunder well, as the night goes on. And Stephen A. Smith, you are with us all night long as well. So stand by. Much more coming up with you, Stephen A. Uh, once again, let, let's go through the storylines as we continue getting set for tonight's draft. The T-Wolves, they're on the clock, and they have been linked to LaMelo Ball, Anthony Edwards, and James Wiseman with the number one overall pick. Smart Money now has Minnesota taking Edwards, the Georgia star, but only the Wolves know. How about the Warriors with the second overall pick? Will they stay there, though? Our mock draft has them taking the big man, James Wiseman, but maybe the move is to trade down, collect assets, and this team will have a healthy Steph Curry, a healthy Clay Thompson, and, of course, Draymond Green. Projections, uh, top pick, uh, you know what? I practiced this name, Kevin. How many times have we practiced this? <laughs> he said a fractured left big toe, according to our Jonathan Gavoni. The injury prevented the USC product from working out for teams, but it's not expected to affect his start to the season. Oh, conquer. And the Knicks sent the 27th and 38th selections to the Jazz, the 23rd pick. So they've already made some movements. They already also have the 8th overall one tonight. Are they looking to package picks to move up even further for one of the top three? We will find out in just a couple of hours with that. In the meantime, here's an updated look at the projected top 10. Remember, hey, Rose just had a bomb already. Mm -hmm. Who knows if this is going to stay as is, but it's all according to ESPN's Jonathan Gavoni. Not much has changed up top. Edwards, Wiseman, LaMelo remain the top three prospects. With the addition of CP3, Gavoni has the son selecting Sadiq Bey out of Villanova instead of Alabama's Kira Lewis Jr., so keep an eye on that. Again, just getting going with tonight's NBA draft coverage. It's all happening right here on the ESPN campus. Let's talk some football now. Kevin? Well, Halliburton would be a steal at eight for both done. Tony, Mike, thank you. When Lonzo Ball was a star at UCLA and later became the second overall pick in the 2017 draft, we heard about the kid brother who would be better. Just check out the jacket and the shoes. My goodness. Over the last few years, we've watched the journey of LaMelo Ball from leaving high school early to playing overseas as a teenager. All of it was a buildup to this day. As he gets ready for tonight's NBA draft, Jalen Rose found, finds out about LaMelo's unique journey back. Either one or two is up to you. Hit it. Hey. You're going to possibly be the number one pick in this year's draft. Yes, sir. So what has your workout regimen and schedule been like? Uh, pretty much I was in Detroit uh, with JJ. Just pretty much getting at it. Waking up at 8. Doing shooting form. After that, go to the uh, weightlifting gym. Here we go. 10 seconds. Squat it down. 9, 8, 7, 6. Good. Come on. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. Relax. Getting the whole body right. Go back to the gym. There we go. There you go. Hey! Go home, watch a movie, rest up, and then restart the day. So you guys are a basketball family. Tell me about what age and some of the drills you did and when you knew that basketball meant everything to you. Uh, well, really, when I was like three, that's when it was. There you go. Oh. Went on like a 10-foot hoop. And then, what did you say after that? You, hold you on, said, hold on. Oh, you said drills and stuff. Yeah, yeah we really didn't do drills. You said three years old? Yeah, yeah, three. On a 10-foot hoop? Yeah, yeah, facts. Very <laughs> <laughs> facts. Here comes the ball. Ball! Puts it down! They need a three ball. Camillo! What was it like playing against professionals overseas versus going to college and playing with kids your age? And playing over there, it's like a whole new style of play that you really could add to your arsenal. I feel I learned a lot and grew from there. One of the things that I've heard throughout this draft process is when people see you, it's like, whoa, he's taller, he's bigger than we oh, thought. Yeah, yeah, right. He can shoot it better than right. we thought. Freshman year, I was like 5'8". Yeah, I was like 5'8". <laughs> and then when I went to uh, overseas, I got to like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and now 6'7". And I think once you hit that growth spurt and your body continued to get stronger, I noticed sure. you start playing through contact. Yeah, the whole body change, you know. First, when you get tall, it'd be kind of different to move and stuff. But once you get used to it, you good. Now the NBA draft is here. 
What is it like for that summary to finally happen? I'm actually really excited. It's uh, going to be my first time in a long time playing back in the States. What about your draft day drip? Now, don't show up with a red and white pinch. No, 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 I'm not. Jalen Rose, I think, wins the Stylin' Award with that red pinstripe. <laughs> Actually, Lonzo draft, I had all red on. But this one, I'm going to have all black and then a little gold in it. It's going to be tough, though. One thing for sure, 22 years ago this past June, Vince Carter looked a lot better than Jalen Rose did just four years prior. This is the 98 NBA draft. We like the suit, Vince. The Warriors selected him fifth overall out of North Carolina. However, he was immediately traded to the Toronto Raptors in a deal that sent his Tar Heel teammate, Anton Jameson, to Golden State. That was, that was back in the day, and now, more than two decades <laughs> later, Vince Carter, <laughs> I mean, a long time ago, and 22 years later, he finally decides to retire and join us here at ESPN. Uh, Vince, I haven't been able to tell you myself, congratulations. Welcome to the family here, and Thank we are you. thrilled to have you here as we get set for tonight's NBA draft. It is hard to believe 22 years ago, right, yes. that your rookie campaign, actually, November of 98, was underway. Went pretty well as you took home Rookie of the Year right. honors, underway to becoming Vince Sanity. Who do you see in tonight's draft that could have an immediate impact?